So I want to talk about 1D motion. And before we can talk about 1D motion, we have to define a few things. Um, I think most of us know what distance is. Distance is simply, you know, if you take a point, here's the first point, here's the second point. I know this is dead simple, but, okay. And you measure the distance between those two points. Okay, that's the distance. So we're gonna have a, a little, a difference between when we're talking about um, 1D motion. We're gonna, there's gonna be a little bit of a difference between distance and displacement. Can you hear that mower running? Jesus. Okay. Um, you can't hear me. I'm gonna talk really loud, so hopefully you can hear me. All right. So if we give these points a position along the x-axis, say this is x initial, and then this is x final, then the displacement, what we're calling the, what I'm going to call the displacement, delta x is equal to x final minus x initial. So it's always going to be x final minus x initial. It's, if this is x final and this is x initial, you have to pay attention to the sign, the SIGN, we'll talk about, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Okay. Then delta x, which we're calling the displacement, is x final minus x initial. Okay, that's real simple. Let's look at speed. What we mean by speed. So the speed of an object, um, or average speed, let me just call it average speed. The average speed is simply the distance traveled divided by the total time that it took to travel that distance. So average speed is distance, not displacement. It can be displacement, but it's just the distance divided by, uh, let me put total time. Okay, so that's what we mean when we say speed or average speed. It's as if, you know, you, you take a trip and you leave Memphis, you go down to Florida and you make a bunch of stops and, uh, you know, you, you go different ways and the total distance that you traveled, looking at the odometer on your car, divided by however long it took you to make that trip, that's what we're calling average speed. Okay? This seems, this is simple, but it gets tricky in some of the problems when they're asking for the speed versus the velocity, the instantaneous velocity and all that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay? So our displacement is measured in, for us, that's going to be measured in meters. If you read chapter one, you know that everything that we do is in kilogram, meters, and seconds. Uh, that, those are the fundamental units for us in physics one. We'll have some other named units, but they're all combinations of kilograms, meters, and seconds. Okay. A meter is roughly uh, about three feet. It's, um, you, you guys know this. I mean, it's 39 point some odd inches, so, okay. Speed will be measured in meters per second or kilometers per second or kilometers per hour or meters per hour or some such thing like that, okay? So let's talk about the idea in one dimension of what we mean by velocity. I'm gonna go ahead and erase this, okay? So for velocity, velocity, okay. 
Velocity is a vector. A vector has a magnitude and a direction. In one dimension, meaning along the line, you've got the positive direction and the negative direction. Okay? So those positive and positives and negatives for displacement, displacement is a vector as well, and velocity, they give you the direction of the object along the x-axis, okay? So when we say velocity, we mean the, and I'll, we'll talk about this, this is the average velocity. The average velocity is simply the displacement divided by the time, okay? That's different than the speed. The displacement is the difference from where you ended up to where you, to where you start, or from where you started, okay? So that's the, the displacement. You may have gone, let's think, think about this. We're in one dimension. So maybe you went this way and then you stopped and you came back this way, okay? So X initial was here. Now I'm drawing it like this. This is along a line. We're only looking at one dimension, okay? X final is here. Your speed would be that total trip divided by the time it took. The, dis the velocity would be x final minus x initial divided by however long that took. They're different. Okay? So, velocity, displacement, these are vectors for us in one dimension. We're gonna, we're gonna do a lot, lot more with vectors, but in one dimension, if you have a positive sign in front of a velocity or a displacement, that means you went in the positive direction. If you have a negative sign, you went in the negative direction. Okay? So this is the average velocity. We can uh, take the instantaneous velocity. I'll just put instantaneous, meaning the velocity that you're traveling at a particular instant. So it's the difference in driving along and looking at your your speed, you know, and calculating your average velocity. Okay, let's say you're going in one direction. Maybe you're speeding up, you're slowing down, and so forth. And you suddenly look down and you find your velocity or you're reading the, you're actually reading the uh, speed off the, um, off the, uh, what is that thing called? The speedometer? Okay. <laughs> So you're actually reading the speed off your speedometer and you look at it at a particular instant, that's the instantaneous velocity and velocity will have a direction as well. So um, the instantaneous is equal to the limit as delta x or well, let me put delta t, doesn't matter, but okay, the limit as delta t goes to zero of delta x divided by delta t. That's what we mean by the instantaneous velocity. And that is dx dt. That's dx dt. So um, all these in velocity, speed, meters per second, okay, and the third thing that we need to look at is Acceleration. Acceleration. Okay, I'm going to erase this. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Okay, it's not just a change in velocity, it's how quickly the velocity changes. You know this from driving a car. I keep going back to these, but we all have experiences of riding in a car, driving a car, and you know that you can go from zero to 60, let's say it takes you two minutes, okay? You're going really slowly. That's a small acceleration. 
you get in a supercar and you go from zero to 60 in 2.7 seconds. That is a large acceleration. The difference in the velocities is the same, but the time it took to create that difference is different, okay? So acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Okay? The rate of change of velocity. So the acceleration and sometimes you'll say, you know, we'll use the letter A. Um, average acceleration or the acceleration for us, all of our accelerations are going to be constant. Okay? So we won't have any varying accelerations. We'll have varying velocities and displacements, but everything that we do will have a constant acceleration. The acceleration is delta V divided by delta T. So it's the change in velocity that we just, you know, we, I explained what velocity was earlier. It's the change in velocity divided by how quickly you changed that velocity. So this is equal to V final. All deltas for us are final minus initial. V final minus V initial divided by delta T. Okay? It's how fast you were going in the end uh, minus how fast you we're going when you started divided by the time it took to make this change. And in 1D motion, well, I'll get, uh, in a minute I'll, I'll the, talk about that. The instantaneous, I guess I can put average here. The instantaneous acceleration is equal to the limit as delta T goes to zero of delta V divided by delta T, and that equals, um, yeah, dv dt, okay, it's dv dt, all right, so that would be the instantaneous acceleration. For us, it's going to be the same either way. We're going to have a constant acceleration, so the instantaneous acceleration and the average acceleration will be the same thing. Okay, uh, I can't think of a situation where it wouldn't be, but hopefully I won't, or we won't come upon that, okay? Does anyone have any questions about this? I, I'm thinking you've probably seen this before. You have a feel for what displacement is, velocity, acceleration. Does anybody have any questions on this? Are you guys still there? Hello? It's straightforward. Okay. All right. Just give me a yes or something every now and then. Because one time, uh, I guess last semester, I was lecturing and, and I just kept going, 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 and I ended and nobody was there. They had been gone for a long time. WebEx had, you know, crapped out and uh, I didn't know it. So. Because I can't see, um, I can't see the WebEx thing on my screen. I guess I could change it, but hmm. anyway. All right. So that's the idea of displacement, of uh, velocity, or average velocity, and acceleration. Okay. And by the way, acceleration is the second derivative. We'll come back to this, but it's the second derivative with respect to position, well, really, position, displacement, okay? All right. So let me talk a little bit about um, the SIGNs for this 1D motion. Let's say you have an object, okay, here's our... Here's the positive direction. Here's the negative direction. 
okay? I mean, not, <laughs> not trying to trick you or anything, just like always. This is the x-axis, okay? So let's say that a car is moving in this direction, okay? So it has a velocity in this direction and it's slowing down, okay? If we were in class, you know, I have all these little cars that I push around and talk about this, but nevertheless, Okay, so here's the object moving in this direction and it's slowing down. What direction is the acceleration? Positive. Ah, oh, positive. Well, if the acceleration is positive, then I would expect that the object is speeding up, right? Yeah? Okay. Uh, if the object is moving in the positive direction and it's slowing down, then the acceleration is negative. A, I'll just make a little thing like that. A, the acceleration is in this direction. Okay? If the object's moving in the positive direction, so it has a positive velocity, and a positive acceleration, the object is speeding up. This is slowing. This is speeding up. Okay. What about the case for, I got some kind of little, oh, okay. What about the case for moving in the negative direction. In this case, if you have a velocity in this direction, which happens to be negative, and the object is slowing, then the acceleration is positive. You following this? That's a positive acceleration, and the object is moving in the negative x direction. That means that the object, the car, whatever it is, is slowing down. If you have an object moving in the negative direction, so v is negative, and the acceleration is negative as well, that's speeding up. Or increasing its velocity. Okay? Does that have to do with the signs? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm trying to get across is that the signs are going to give us the direction of the velocity, the displacement, and the acceleration. Don't okay, just... So if you have two positives, it's positive. And if you have two negatives, technically it's also positive, right? E, uh, what is positive? Like, so speeding up, like in my brain, I'm taking it as, okay, it's going to end up positive if both of them are together. Like, the signs have to be the same for it to be speeding up. Yes. The last thing you said, I agree with. I'll talk about that in a second, okay? Okay. Okay. Um, so, if the vectors, I, I think this is what she was saying, if the vectors are in the opposite direction of one another, so the velocity and the acceleration are opposite of one another, the object's slowing down. Doesn't matter if the velocity is negative and the acceleration is positive, it's slowing. What I'm getting, what I'm trying to get across is don't think that just because you have a positive acceleration that the object's speeding up. It's not, necessarily, okay? You have to pay attention to what the velocity is doing as well, okay? If the signs are the same, like you just said a minute ago, if the signs are the same, you have a negative velocity and a negative acceleration, 
that object is speeding up. So in other words, if the velocity vector, I know we haven't talked about vectors, but I think most of you probably have an idea of what I mean when I say a vector, a magnitude and a direction. And our direction is defined by this positive and negative, okay? We're in one dimension, positive is to the right, negative is to the left. So if both of these are in the same direction, meaning the velocity and the acceleration are both in the negative direction, the object's speeding up. Okay, likewise, simplest case, positive velocity, positive acceleration, speeding up. Okay? Are there any questions on that? What's that? No, no okay thank you for responding all right um, all right let's look at an example based on this <clears throat> and you really do have to be careful with these signs it's um, it's tricky. You have to, you know, one of the things that I want you to do is, um, I recommend that you do, is not just look for an equation. What equation do I use? Think about the physics. Think about what's going on as far as these objects in motion. You know, physics one, it's kind of nice because you have all these films that you can run in your brain. You can think about things rolling down hills, things crashing into one another, things speeding up, slowing down. So um, spend a little time trying to work out that video in your brain, okay, of what's happening. All right, so let's say that uh, here's the best car I can draw. Well, maybe not the best, but eh, it's terrible. It looks like an elephant. Okay. Uh, there's a car, a cart. Okay. Let's say it starts out at X equals zero and it ends up down here at, uh, what? Well, I don't know yet. All right. So let's say that it's traveling at 50 kilometers per hour. Okay. And travels for 20 minutes. So from here, let's give you a time interval, 20 minutes. Okay. So it travels for 20 minutes and it stops. So it stops down here, wherever this may be, we can figure it out. Stops for five minutes. So it's traveling along at 50 kilometers per hour for 20 minutes, makes a sudden stop and stays there for five minutes. Then I'm gonna draw this below this, but um, it's along the same line, it comes back, okay? So it starts, it's going in this direction, okay? And it travels 40 kilometers per hour in this direction for how many minutes? 10 minutes, okay? So the first, uh, the, by the way, this is the positive x direction is this way, okay? So the first part of the trip is just from here to wherever it ends up, er, stops, okay? Then the second part of the trip is it just sits there for five minutes. The third part of the trip is it travels in the opposite direction at 40 kilometers per hour for 10 minutes. 
So, for the first part, what is the average speed? Well, that's pretty darn simple. I don't have to do a calculation, really, because it traveled at 50 kilometers per hour for the whole trip. I'm not considering this sudden little stop down here. I don't know what happened. I just know that for 20 minutes it went 50 kilometers per hour and it ended up here. Okay. So the average speed in the first part, that's pretty darn simple. That's equal to 50 kilometers per hour. Okay. What about the average speed in the first the first part plus the second. So now I'm going to include this five minute stop as part of my trip. Okay? So in that case, you need the distance traveled, distance, divided by the time. This is the uh, average speed. Okay. So that's the distance divided by the time. Well, now we have to figure that out. And I don't have much board space, so I'm going to erase this. All right, so I'm going to figure out the distance traveled in that first part of the trip. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put everything, one of the things that we'll, we'll do a lot is find some consistent units. We could work with uh, kilometers per hour and minutes, but I would recommend putting everything in meters and seconds. That's probably what I'll do unless those times are given in hours or something like that. It, it doesn't matter. It's up to you as far as how you want to manipulate the units, but I like to put it in standard sort of meters, seconds, kilograms most of the time. So for the first part of the trip, because I'm calculating the average speed for the first plus the second part, that's the distance divided by the time. Okay. So 50 kilometers per hour times, this is my units conversion, 1,000 meters per one kilometer times one hour is, yeah, I know that's hour. Hour is 3,600 seconds and by my calculation, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that's 13.89 meters per second. Okay, fine. I'm going to need that because I need to know that distance traveled in that first part. Now, <clears throat> 20 minutes is, let's see, in the first part, yeah, 20 minutes. is equal to how many seconds? 1,200 seconds. 1,200 seconds, all right. For some reason, okay. Uh, but that's the first part. I also want to know how many seconds are in 25 minutes. Well, that's pretty simple. That's five more minutes, so that's 1,500 seconds. Okay. So the distance traveled in the first plus the second, that's simply 13.89 meters per second times 1,200 seconds. Is equal to 13.89 meters per second times 1,200 seconds. And that is equal to, what have I got here? 16,000, 
666 uh, point, that should be a comma, point seven meters, okay? So about 17 kilometers, something like that. Let's see, 50 kilometers per hour, a third of an hour, yeah, that's about right. Okay, um, <clears throat> now the total time, because I'm calculating the average speed for the first plus second, so I'll just put that down here. 16,666.7 meters, that's the distance traveled. The total time is the time it took me to get to that point plus my five minutes rest, okay? So that was 1,500 seconds. All right, so now I can calculate the average speed if I'm including my delay of five minutes. So the average speed, this is first plus second part of the trip, average speed is equal to this divided by this, and I got 11.11 um, .11 .11 meters per second. And you can check me on that. <clears throat> Any uh, questions on that? Very simple, straight, very, very basic. Okay, let's look at the third part of the trip. The third part of the trip, I turned around and I went in the opposite direction. So for the third part, okay, the average speed Well, it's pretty darn simple. It's just the distance divided by the time, but the velocity or the speed never changed. So the average is equal to 40 kilometers per hour. Okay, that's a K. <sighs> okay. Ah, what about the average velocity? What was the average velocity for the third part of the trip? Anybody care to take a guess? What's 20 kilometers per hour? You're close. It was in the negative direction, wasn't it? Yes. So the average velocity is negative 40 kilometers per hour. Okay, speed, you know, when, you, when you're calculating speed, there are no negatives. It's a number. It's a positive number. It's an absolute value. Distance traveled divided by time. Okay, and in this case, it's sent, we could calculate it that way, but in this case, it's really simple because the speed never changed. So the velocity, the average velocity was negative 40 kilometers per hour. Now let's look at the entire trip. First part, that was the 50 kilometers per hour in the positive x direction. Second part was that delay of five minutes. Third part was 40 kilometers per hour in the negative direction, okay? So I wanna calculate the average speed and the average velocity for the entire trip. <clears throat> All right, so this is first plus second part plus third. So this is the entire trip. Okay. So we know that um, uh, let's see, for the first part you traveled, how far did we travel in the first part? I already calculated that. 
16,666.7. So the distance in the first part was 16,666.7 meters. That's the first part. Okay. Uh, for the second part, I I'm headed towards the average speed. Okay. For the second part, zero meters. I sat there for five minutes. For the third part, I need to calculate the distance that I traveled. All right. So the distance that I traveled was 40 kilometers per hour. Times, okay, a thousand meters per kilometer times uh, one hour is 3,600 seconds. What else do I need in there? Uh, times 600 seconds. I'll squeeze that in, that. I'll put that down here, times 600 seconds. That was uh, 10 minutes, right? That's where I'm coming up with that. This is the velocity times the time. That gives me the distance traveled. So that is equal to 6,666.7 meters. The total distance traveled is first plus second plus third. So I have to add these two together. No distance traveled at that wait time. So the total distance for the whole thing is equal to uh, 16,666.7 plus 6,666.7 meters, that's 23, 333.3 meters. Okay. Total time, <clears throat> total time was equal to 35 minutes. Because remember, we went 20 minutes, five minutes stopped, 10 minutes the other way. So that was 35 minutes. That's equal to 2,100 seconds. That's what I have here. So the average speed For the entire trip, average speed is equal to 23,333.3 meters divided by 2100 seconds. It's just however far you went. Distance you traveled, ground you covered. Divided by however long it took <clears throat> and works out to be the same as the average speed in the beginning. Okay. Um, what's the average velocity? What's the average velocity? Well, remember average velocity depends on your starting position, your ending position, and the time it took. So V average is equal to delta X divided by delta T. That's X, I'll write it out. This is equal to X final minus X initial divided by delta T, which delta T is T final minus T initial, so however long it took. Well, um, let's look at this trip. Okay. <clears throat> it's 
started out here at x equals zero. We ended up down here at, this is the first part, came down here and ended up at, what was it, 16, uh, 16, 6.7 6, 6 meters, then turned around and went from here, went um, 6,000, <laughs> okay. 6,666.7 meters in this direction, okay? So x final, x initial is equal to zero, x final is equal to 10,000 meters or 10 kilometers, right? The way I see it. X final is equal to 10,000. Delta T, X initial was equal to zero. Delta T was equal to the total time of the trip, which is 2,100 seconds. Okay. Uh, so, I'll write it. I'll write it over here, go backwards. So the average velocity is equal to 10,000 meters divided by 2,100 seconds. And that is equal to 4.76 meters per second. That's the average velocity. The average, average velocity is where you ended up minus where you started. You're on a one-dimensional line, and you divide that by the time it took. It's positive because you ended up at, you know, we ended up on the right side of x equals zero. If we had let the clock keep going, and ended up over here, this is x equals zero, then the average velocity would be negative. Okay? Your displacement would have been negative because you'd have x final would be negative minus x initial, which is zero. You'd have a negative average velocity. Are there any questions uh, about this relationship between displacement and distance. So displacement versus distance. Displacement has a direction. Distance doesn't. It's just a, a scalar. Well, all of this in 1D is a scalar, but it's just a positive number. Uh, velocity versus speed. Okay. And acceleration for us is going to be acceleration. Instantaneous versus the average, it really the same thing for us. So to get the distance, it says like from the numbers you gave us, uh -huh. we're just giving it to meters, right? Yeah, that's what I did. I, I, what's that? Like that's what you were doing. You are just getting the 50 kilometers per hour yeah. to... Okay. Yeah, I, that's just my way. I mean, I usually put it in meters, seconds, kilograms. If the times had been given in hours, well, one thing is I might have just kept it in kilometers per hour or something. But one thing about it is you're usually always going to see acceleration in, oh, I didn't tell you about units for acceleration. Okay, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, Acceleration is usually always going to be given in meters per second squared, okay? So um, you rarely see accelerations given in kilometers per hour squared or something strange like that. So in all these uh, motion problems and everything, the accelerations are typically going to be in meters per second squared. And so I usually convert everything to meters per second. 
but as long as you're consistent, as long as you have uh, everything in kilometers and everything in hours or whatever it is, then you're good. But uh, okay, yeah. Let's talk about let's talk about the units for acceleration. Thank you, sir. Oh, I got an interruption here. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, okay. Acceleration is delta V divided by delta T. That's the average acceleration, or for us, it's going to be dV dt. And it had, and this is V final minus V initial divided by delta T. Okay. This has units of meters per second. Delta T has units of seconds. And, you know, it's like I said, it's a rate of change of velocity. It's not just the change in velocity. It's how quickly the velocity changes. So the units for acceleration rewritten is going to be equal to meters per second per second. You rarely ever see it written that way these days. Okay, this is equal to meters per second squared. Okay. Acceleration due to gravity, which uh, most of you are familiar with uh, from somewhere, I'm thinking you are, uh, you know, 9.8 meters per second squared. So uh, we're going to do some free fall problems. Uh, that's 1D motion. That one dimension is in the Y direction, but uh, doesn't really matter. Okay. Any questions on that? No, no questions. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give you, this will probably be the last thing we do today. We'll um, develop some equations for Uh, to use for these type problems. Let's see, I don't know if this is... Uh, okay. Well. So oftentimes, just like all the things that you typically do in science classes, you're going to have a bunch of knowns and you're going to have one unknown or two unknowns that you have to calculate. So delta... Uh, delta X is equal to X final minus X initial. I think Surway uses these subscripts, uh, final and initial, pretty sure. Um, the old text that I used, which was Resnick and Halliday, they used the little knots, but doesn't matter. Notation, you have to get used to it. So if I sometimes write down a knot, like x naught, that means x initial. Okay, uh, we know that v average is equal to delta x divided by delta t. So writing this out, this is x final minus x initial divided by delta t and x final by moving this around I'll, I'll go ahead and x final minus x initial is v average times delta t okay we'll change that around a little bit oh i'm frozen yeah i can hear you can he hear us? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, you're frozen. I'm you frozen. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe this is a good place to stop. Are you, are Hold you on a second. Right now? Hold on a second. I think it came back. Uh, all right. Um, I 
I can't see myself. Okay, uh, am I there? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, let's go ahead and stop here. Um, so read on. This is Most of this stuff is in Chapter 2. Um, oh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the lab. I'll send you a syllabus for the lab this evening. Uh, I think we'll do like, I may have to change it, but I, I think we'll do nine labs. That's my goal. And it amounts to watching the lab. I'm going to send you a data sheet and uh, you fill it out, do a few calculations. On three of the labs, you'll have to do a simple little report, which there's a template for. Um, so anyway, uh, we'll talk, we can talk more about that tomorrow. I'll, I'll send it to you this evening. Okay. Okay, we got eight people. That's not bad. Uh, any questions on anything? Will this lecture be on YouTube? It will. I'll get it posted by tonight. Okay. I don't, I don't think I'll post it like immediately right now, but it takes me a minute to edit it and get it uploaded, so. Do we have any uh, homework assignments or uh, not, that be not yet, tonight? no. Okay. They're coming, for, like, they're coming. Time. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, you guys have a good afternoon. I'll see you tomorrow. You too. Thank you. Bye.